So this year's gone pretty quickly, and the last time I recall hearing about anything related to the Bleach universe was back in March, which only feels like a little while ago, and that went within a blink of an eye. The Burn the Witch will be airing around fall, and I'm possibly not the only person who'll be excited for it, mainly due to most of us haven't seen much of Kubo's work in years. And I personally think the series ended prematurely. So let's get into this one shot. One of the things I liked about this series is that it's a nice change of pace seeing in recent Shonen series some female protagonists. Which is good since usually it's male orientated these days. I do think this one shot was pretty interesting and also has a ton of potential. And I did see some similarities from Kubo's previous work. But if your writing style isn't broken, there's no point really to change it, I guess. <laughs> One of the interesting things, when looking around for some research information, I came across an author's note, which stated that Kubo wanted to challenge himself by putting his dog in a manga. So, so that cute little furball in the one-shot, as far as I can tell, Kubo's IRL dog, which could be a nod, as well as taking some influence from from Dragon Ball, referring to Beerus, if I remember correctly, was Akira Toriyama's cat, and the subtle ringtone of Noel, which it gets called to help out in the human realm. Whilst reading this one shot, we ended up finding out about certain gadgets, which seem to be rather different from the Japanese branch, and I'm not 100% sure whether these weapons or gizmos that all the witches or wizards use in this spin-off kill the spirits or dragons completely off, like how the Quincy Arrows is, which if they do, it could lead to a lot of issues later on in the series. Or whether it's like the Soul Reapers and Pactos, where it blesses them into the afterlife, as such. This is one thing I personally would like to know, and I've really missed this series over the years. And I'm hoping, for all the people who are still watching this video until now, you're more likely a fellow Bleach fan. And hopefully this series should get your blood pumping, because it's set in the same universe. So in theory, the Japanese branch could possibly show up, which would allow some cameos to happen. But that would mainly be a possibility if the timelines matched up. Because for all we know, it could be set in the distant past, the present, or even the near or far future, for all we can tell. But due to hearing about this western branch, sort of got me thinking how many branches are there in the world of the living and are both the main characters human or are they more or less like Rukia who reside in the Soul Society or is this reverse London a completely different thing entirely like a pocket dimension and where exactly does the western branch fit in within the hierarchy this one shot has left so many questions so hopefully this fall or around winter time for myself We'll get to find out at least some of these intricacies. One thing I'd like to know is whether their spells we see them using are either keto based attacks or if they're a completely different type of energy source entirely. For example, could magic actually exist? Well, well I guess we're more or less going to have to find out about that. It seems this branch uses a plethora of different types of weaponry rather than swords. In the west branch, as we've seen so far, it seems like they're using some futuristic looking base zappers, like guns, or that resemble guns, to attack their equivalent of a hollow. That is, if it is the equivalent of a hollow, or if it's a completely different being. But I guess this could be a happy surprise if the movie that's coming up is a series adaptation too. As far as I can remember, Soul Reapers could technically fly. When when they were in their cell forms, as long as they have a decent control of, of their power. But in this one shot, we did get to see some flying type of equipment, which from a first glance looks like a broom, which most witches in written lore have, due to it follows the trope. And these brooms are called broom buggies, which have a rather cutie vibe to them, like, for example, Rukia's drawing designs. The one unexpected thing it seems that in the western branch, dragons and witches try to somewhat coexist, unlike the Japanese branch, that apparently slayed all, all the dragons in their area. 
in, the, in this branch. Dragons seem to be harvested here, and the resources can range from electricity, textiles, minerals, fuel, and even food. Depending on what type of dragon those resources have been acquired from, the British, the British branch, which is set in London, does mention the Japanese branch, but it seems to have mixed feelings towards it. From the sound of it, the main two Fima characters, Nobel and Nini, both could have possible ties to the Japanese branch, maybe being part British and part Japanese. But this could just be myself. Like reading way too too much into this, and it also seems they've never visited the place, which could lead to collaboration possibilities or even a more immersive story if it leads towards there. Maybe explaining why the Japanese branch slayed all the dragons on their side of the world. It seems the wizards and witches have their type of ETF thirteen, but we haven't been told much. One thing we know for certain is that you have to be at least a wingbind member to be able to come in contact with dragons. But so far, that's all we really know. And also, if you haven't passed the exam to become a member of the wingbind agency, which could lead to a being punished, as well as being given a more deadly punishment. And this is where the comparisons between both branches seem to be somewhat similar. Which in Bleach, if you broke a rule, you were unfortunately imprisoned for possibly a century which is the less fatal route, as well as the other possibility of being sentenced to death. One interesting thing we did end up finding out was that the dark dragons are created when they come in contact with humans and have absorbed their negative emotions. And these negative emotions could possibly include lust. These types of dragons tend to be highly intelligent. And most of these types of dragons can speak the human language, possibly all human languages. Another thing we found out is about a dragon classification called the Skyzer. It's a pretty rare type of dragon, which is only known by a select few people, due to it possibly being lost to time. These types of dragons take over corpses and do exactly what their name describes. One of the things I do like is the overall design of these creatures being somewhat familiar, yet unique looking in a way. And it also gives off a sort of Lovecraftian vibe, or in my eyes at least. But this could be one of many designs on how these dragons will or could possibly turn out. A rumour or a possible myth that came straight from the dragon's mouth is that some of the dragons seem to believe that if they eat a witch, that it allows them to obtain immortality. But whether this is fact or fiction is unknown. And I'm sure some people may either love this or hate this. It looks like the panty trope in this particular instance had some weight to it, due to it was used to progress the story on, to add a little bit of humour. But the only problem with this type of trope is it can get really old, like, extremely quickly. It could backfire. So let's hope it doesn't get extremely overused. Like how it has been portrayed in different series... And let's just hope it's not a constant rolling gag. The thing I didn't realise that I missed until reading this one shot is Kubo's expressive drawing style. And as far as I can recall, I'm not the only person. And he's a master at his craft, being able to portray the right emotion for the right time, which shows you how the character is feeling within that instance. And this was one thing I forgot I liked since Kubo's been out of the picture for years. And we did get a little bit of a backstory for the perverted main character. It seems he had a rather tragic backstory involving both him and his friend. And this is where I've noticed some similarities as well with Bleach. But with them being in the same universe, I guess it's just a coincidence. So for me, Algo gives off a mix between the perverted playful side of Con as well as Ichigo. And it's not due to... He looks pretty much a spitting image of the guy. But the reason why he gives off each good vibes to me is due to when he saved Nini from danger, which gave me flashbacks to where Ichigo saved Rukia in the hollows in the first episode of Bleach. So there are some parallels, but although he may be a pervert, he seems to have a heart of gold, well at least when it comes to family and friends. 
So from what we've been told near the end of this one shot is that when humans come in contact with a dragon, this isn't a good thing. Jisoo, this could possibly affect them for the worst. So Bulgo, when saving Nini, was bitten by a dragon, was making him become an entirely different species called the Haunted Ones, which makes him more in common with a dragon than a human. And because this happened, it's made the Western Branch have to protect Bulgo due to what he has now become, and the Western Branch protect dragons, whether it be a subclass or not. And as I mentioned earlier, I do think this one shot has a lot of promise. I just hope Kubo learnt from his previous series, and is able to tweak them for the better. But from the looks of it, this might have already been utilised, since at least one of the two main characters has a goal they would like to achieve, which is great for an ongoing show, due to it gives the character progression point to continue the story in a fun way. As, as far as I can recall, people like to see the underdogs reach their dreams, however easy or impossible they may be. And for Nini, this is her wanting to become a member of the Sabres. And if the story happens to lead elsewhere, it will eventually connect back up to the main character's ideals. I absolutely adore the Bleach series, but it did lose its focus somewhere in, in its run, which could have led to its downfall. And this is why I would like both Burn the Witch, as well as the continuation of the last Bleach arc, to get some much-needed attention that it deserves, so we all get to see more of Kubo's work. And I hope you've enjoyed this format of video. I'm still trying to continuously improve. If you want more Bleach-related stuff, just let me know down in the comments below, or message me over on Twitter. And all of you, make sure to have a wonderful day. Bye now.